Council to order at 7 o'clock. We'll start with roll call. Councilman Russell. Present. Councilman Miller. Present. Councilman Baum. Howdy. Councilwoman Austin. Present. Councilman Wishick. Here. Next, we all join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next, we're going to do the uh, Whitestown Fire Department badge pinning. Chief Westrich, would you please come forward? All right, good evening, Council. I uh, want to thank you for the opportunity for us to recognize our three um, new hires to the department. You guys stand up here, please. Uh, we'll introduce them, talk just a little bit about uh, their history, and then they'll be pinned and sworn in by the clerk treasurer. So we'll start with uh, Joshua Mast. Joshua graduated from McConaughey High School in 2000 to continue to study a double major in biblical studies and youth ministry. Two years into college, Joshua decided to pursue his career in public safety. He became a volunteer in Tennessee in 2001 obtained his EMT in 2005 and received his paramedic license in 2009. Joshua has worked with Seymour, Tennessee and the Amboy and Converse, Indiana Fire Departments along with Indianapolis Fire Department, Civilian EMS Division, Jackson Fire Territory and the Zionsville Fire Department prior to joining the Whitestown Fire Department. Joshua will be, will be pinned by his wife of 15 and a half years, Beth. You know what? Pause real quick. <laughs> so we're in a badge pinning ceremony and you forgot the badges just to be clear for those following along at home that is, that is absolutely correct thank you for the clarification My chief <laughs> makes you wonder who's more nervous right i think i got their names right Congratulations, Josh. <laughs> Next is Caleb Fox. Caleb graduated from Mooresville High School in 2011, obtained his firefighter certification in 2010, and his EMT certification in 2011. Caleb has worked with the Madison Township Fire Department for seven years prior to joining the Whitestown Fire Department. Tonight, Caleb will be pinned by his wife, Elizabeth. Congratulations, Caleb. And last but not least, Jason Wyland. Jason was homeschooled and graduated in 2005 and followed that up with an associate's degree in public safety with a focus in fire science. He obtained his firefighter certification in 2006, his EMT certification in 2008. Jason is currently enrolled in paramedic school and he has worked with the Angola Fire Department for five years and the Monticello Fire Department for four years prior to joining the Whitestown Fire Department. Jason will be pinned tonight by Lieutenant Nathan Joseph.
Congratulations, Jason. Now, if you guys will turn around and uh, face Clerk Treasurer Matt Summer. If you'll all hold up your right hands and repeat after me. I state your name. I Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Indiana and that I will faithfully, impartially, and honestly discharge the duties of my office as a firefighter for the town of Whitestown, Boone County, Indiana in the manner provided by law and according to the best of my knowledge and abilities, so help me God. Congratulations. Welcome to the town, gentlemen. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, welcome to our newest members of the fire department. We are glad to have you here. We appreciate the families that came out to support them during their pinning tonight, and we look forward to the, the work of the town that you'll be doing. So thank you again for your service. As we move on to the next item of the agenda, I did want to take a moment here uh, to thank uh, staff for their support of our uh, awareness resolutions from last month. Uh, on April 2nd, it was uh, Autism Awareness Day, and I saw several uh, different departments doing multiple things to promote autism as we requested and to make that a part of, of the culture here in Whitestown. And then today on Wear Blue Day, I see many different staff members wearing blue and, and showing their support for Child Abuse Awareness, uh, Prevention Awareness Month. We have our pinwheel garden right out front, and I look forward to the work that the town will continue to do and staff will continue to do over the rest of this month. So I just wanted to make that note and, and thank you all for moving forward on the items that we up here at the tables uh, ask of you to do, and we appreciate your work. With that, we have next on our uh, agenda on our presentations, item B, the Boone EDC. Molly, welcome. All right, thank you all. Molly Whitehead, Boone County Economic Development Corporation. Thanks so much for the opportunity to give you all a brief update on our activity over the last month. First of all, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our newest staff member, Amy Hammerly. Many of you may know Amy. She comes from a um, longtime Boone County resident, but comes from United Way of Boone County. So we're really excited about the connections that she already has within the community and a lot of great ideas. So Amy's role in our office will be to develop those workforce and community development initiatives, working with our existing, with future businesses, our incumbent workers, trying to find um, trying to find some solutions to some of the challenges that we face. And then from a placemaking standpoint, her role will be really to assist the communities in those efforts that you all are already working on, um, advocate for what you're doing, lead those initiatives where you determine that we can best be of help to you. So we're looking forward to the next, uh, well, really her getting her feet wet and uh, really getting to work on those fronts. Second thing to note, um, as you may all be aware, we have recently just internally complete, completed our restructuring process. That's a nine month long process that we have been going through as an organization just to make sure that we're the most, um, or we're functioning the most efficiently as we possibly can. And so with that, we do have a new board of directors in place as of the first of this month. The board decreased in size from 23 down to eight. And so a much more uh, nimble organization. But what I'm really excited about is our Platinum Circle that we've created for the Boone EDC. And this is our, this is our think tank for economic, workforce, and community development efforts. It's a public-private group. And Whitestown, as a reminder, does have two seats on that Platinum Circle. So we look forward to having you all participate in that way. Where lead activity is concerned, we did have a slight decrease in leads quarter one compared to this time about a year ago. Not too concerning at this point. That'll probably even itself out. Um, activity has probably been a little bit slower, um, but we do have quite a few announcements that are kind of just right there in the pipeline ready to go. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll have some of those deals um, start to break. And then finally, I did want to mention our upcoming job fair is this coming Monday, April 15th. It's from 4 to 7. That is here at the Whitestown Municipal Complex. We have over 30 employers from Boone County, over 900 positions 
that they're looking to fill. So that is open to the public and really want to thank you all for graciously allowing us to use your facility here um, for those efforts. With that, I'll close, but I would be happy to answer any questions. And again, thank you for the opportunity to speak and partner with you. All right, well, thank you for coming and welcome to the team. Glad to have you. And uh, as far as job fair is concerned, great to see those employers are going to be here. And when, whatever we can do to assist and to provide this facility and get some use out of it, we're always here to help. So thank you, Molly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda, we have the Zionsville Community Schools. You guys want to come on up? Um, Recently, uh, Jason and I sat down with the school corporation and in a spirit of encouraging and uh, cooperation between our two units and trying to improve communication, we decided it would be great to have them here uh, at this meeting and to continue this as an update, hopefully on a quarterly basis or as we can, uh, so that we can hear from the schools themselves and see what's going on and find out what we can do to help support them as we try to strive to do that with all the schools that serve our uh, community. So, Dr. Robinson, thank you for being here and welcome to your team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Council and staff uh, folks. Uh, thanks for tech help. Couldn't have done that. Uh, we appreciate a bit of your time to talk about what's going on in our management of the in the district. You know, we serve the Eagle Township portion of the Whitestown Municipality in terms of students attending our public schools if they choose public schools. And, uh, and then we serve all of the Zionsville Municipality and Eagle and Union Townships. But our footprint is Eagle and Union Townships. That's it. Uh, and there is some confusion about that. And, uh, of course, you get the, that confusion in that you do span. Uh, the two school districts, I, I suspect you get that question a lot, and so thank you for answering that. We're with you this evening really to talk about the fact that we're looking backward with pride and what we've done and what we've been able to accomplish through the recession and through being the lowest funded school district for many, many years, and looking forward with plans uh, that we hope to take to our own board of trustees uh, in uh, starting on April 29th. And uh, that involves uh, really managing growth, as we've had to do for many years, and growing rather consistently, and maintaining a stable school tax rate. That's something that is uh, of importance to us as we grow and we accommodate that growth. We don't want to see big spikes in the tax rate. Nobody else does either. Uh, we use expert studies in demographics and facilities and, and through financial stewardship that has been proven and externally validated by uh, people like uh, Standards and Poor's and others uh, that we'll talk about just briefly. We are the lowest funded school district in the state in terms of the per pupil expenditure that comes to the Zionsville Community Schools on behalf of those kids in Whitestown and Zionsville who are served by us. But we did just get an uptick in our credit rating and uh, certainly you know that's a big deal, uh, a material deal when you go to borrow money and and do other financial things. So we're one of only two school districts in the state of Indiana with a double-A credit rating. Uh, interestingly, the other one is Carmel. So the two lowest funded school districts have the best credit rating in the state of Indiana. Uh, we've been 15 years without new construction debt. At the same time, we've added 3,000 students. Obviously, there's some, uh, some really important stewardship going on there when we can accommodate uh, so many new students across those years, many years over 200 uh, per year. Uh, and in fact, that's what we're going to see for the next decade, about 200 per year. Uh, ZCS now, because we are a referendum state, our operating <coughs> referendum actually pays for one of every three teachers. So obviously a third of our program and services uh, at the, the, you know, eye to eye with kids really is dependent upon our ability to renew those referenda as they come about. Uh, we promised that we would protect class sizes and property values, and in the longer version, in fact, we're going to give you a copy of the longer version of this PowerPoint that we've been presenting all around the community. Uh, we have proven and externally validated that we've done both of these. We've protected those class sizes and property values when the community did vote for us and give us the opportunity to, to extend the operating referendum in 2015. So our plan that we wanted to just preview with the, you this evening that we'll take to our board uh, starting April 29th is a new elementary school by 2022, uh, one redistricting round. We haven't done a full round of entire community redistricting in 17 years. We'd like that to go a full 20 years because it's hard to do that. And by bringing on one new elementary school by 2022, we can do that. A high school addition, 32 classrooms by 2023, and upkeep of the seven other campuses. We've lost $21 million to, to property tax caps since 2010. And so the upkeep is something that's been very, very difficult for us 
Uh, certainly other government entities know about that. Uh, it happens to them as well. The path then would be to get our board to say yes, we'll be on the ballot in November with two ballot questions. The first one to, would be the renewal of our operating referendum at the exact same rate, 24.44 cents. It's never been higher than that. In fact, we've never achieved that maximum rate. Uh, and then pass a capital referendum. For the facilities and infrastructure, we need to pay 200 new students every year for the next decade as proven by the demographic study of the Indiana Business Resources Center. Uh, we have to, by state law, be on the ballot to do uh, the bonding for that capital upkeep or, or uh, new capital improvements. So this is uh, just one piece. I know you can't read it, but I'm going to do a fly-in to show you that the demographic study by IBRC, and these folks have been amazing. 20 years they've done our demographic study. This year they were off by three kids. They have over 7,000 students. That's amazing. And their algorithms have been, and you know how rapidly you have grown, they have been nailing it every year, even during the recession, with as many housing starts that were kind of in fits and starts, they still got it every year uh, at a very, very high level. So we trust them, and we know that this is true. We'll be 9,000 students by 2027. The proposed site for that new elementary school is over here off the 875 campus, just north of the softball and baseball diamonds, pretty close by. Uh, and we know that having it centrally located will help us if we do re when we do redistricting to pull fewer kids from each of those uh, high growth areas. At present, let me go back to that, at present our highest growth areas uh, are at Boone Meadow in the elementaries and uh, at Union Elementary on the far other side of the district. So uh, growing in those two areas. This is from a master planning document we did with the town of Zionsville as was required in 2008. You see the two darker brown uh, squares that was just anticipating, it wasn't really etched in stone, but it was anticipating that we could go to 3,600 students on that campus. We are presently at 2,100. So what we're talking about is one of those two remodels. But if you've been in that high school, you know that you only have one corridor. With 2,100 students, getting from east to west in that high school is already a problem. We've already outstripped all of our cafeteria space. We're serving out of three cafeterias. It's grossly inefficient. It's just a very difficult uh, elbow room kind of existence already, and we're nearing capacity. So what we would propose to do is do a new east-west classroom corridor on the north side by Mulberry Street and add a central cafeteria multipurpose area. And when we do that, we could recapture the old cafeteria to add the 32 classrooms. And then we would reorient so that the back where all the parking is becomes the front. That would help us with safety and control of the campus when kids are entering and as they enter throughout the day. So it's a little more detail than you may have wanted about the high school, but just so people can get their heads around it since it is uh, the high school in the district and folks like to ask that. Here's a planning board, uh, part of our um, external, our use of external consultants um, to help us uh, determine what those capacities are for our schools. We have this planning board for every school, and here you see we're really reaching the, the end uh, of the line for that high school. So ending the facilities piece and turning it over to the real talent, which is Mike Schaefer, our CFO, uh, this f facility capacity that we've done for all of our buildings is based on really deep study and external help from experts at IU. Uh, the elementary six I talked about in the high school space, I didn't really mention much about the other Facilities upkeep, I mean, think about it, when we add 200 kids each year, we're going to have to have some new buses and some, some upkeep, new asphalt at the transportation center, that sort of stuff. So those are the other things that would be in the bond issue. Um, standing with Mike and me tonight is Becky Kaufman, who is our chief operating officer. And if you do have questions, we'll probably yield to her because she's truly smart. Uh, but here's Mike with some, uh, some tidbits on the, the financial piece. <clears throat> Thank you. We uh, are, are very interested in managing our tax rate, as Dr. Robinson said. Some of you may have, have been aware that in 2014 our tax rate was about 20 percent higher than it is now. Uh, at that time we financed some bonds, ref refinanced a number of bonds, and actually lowered the tax rate over a two-year period by about 20 percent and formulated a long-term plan, a 20-year plan, to, to keep it there. So currently we are in the fifth year of our 20-year plan. Uh, it's been very successful, and we are maintaining that tax rate at 20 percent below the 2014 level. We believe we can add a new elementary school as well as the various other additions that Dr. Robinson referred to, and we can lower the tax rate. We can take advantage of the timing. There's some older debt that will be rolling off at the time these new things would, would be taking effect, such that we will actually project a tax rate that would be about five cents lower than it is today out in 2023, which is the year you'd see the effect 
of the, the new financing. However, even with the lower tax rate, some people's tax bills will go up. Now, that's counterintuitive, but it is an interaction between the state tax caps as well as the different tax rates that apply in the different parts of our school district. In fact, within the school district right now, there are actually five different tax rates that are, are being paid by the citizens. The school corporation has just one tax rate that's applied uniformly across the entire district, uh, but the various uh, municipal rates do, in fact, vary depending on location. And if we look at our analysis then, looking at those different rates and the interplay with the tax caps, uh, we believe that approximately 68% of all the assessed properties in the school district, in fact, will see a, a small tax decrease uh, in 2023 as, a, as compared to now. Uh, about uh, about one-third, about 32% will, in fact, see an increase. Uh, so that uh, will be very uh, situational for the individual property owner to determine whether they'll be in the in the uh, increase or decrease category, uh, we are working on and we'll have on offline on our website, if our board decides to go forward with this, a calculator which each individual can use, uh, putting in their assessed value of their property, uh, the nature of the property, is it a homestead or is it one of the other categories, and it will show them what the difference would be between uh, the current tax bill that they're getting and what we estimate the tax bill would be. In this particular case we're showing right now is one example, again, because of that interaction with the tax caps and the uh, different tax rates. Uh, an example, a uh, house in Zionsville, the uh, assessed value 353.5 is actually the median value for all the homes in the entire school district. Uh, and th in that particular case, if it was in Zionsville, they'd see uh, an increase of about $8 a month uh, from, this, uh, from this proposed action. If we uh, look at a couple other examples, the town of Zionsville, looking at the Zionsville median, 374, 200, again, that interaction between the tax caps and the, and the different rates, uh, that would actually look at it a little bit more, $11, but you're looking a little higher median. Uh, here in, in Whitestown, the median is, is currently 291.1, and that would cause, because again of that interaction with the tax caps, uh, a 2576 increase by our estimate. This calculator will be online for everyone who wishes to see it. They will be able to use it for their individual property to determine what their increase or decrease might be. And with that uh, information, we hope we'll be able to go armed into the voting booth as an informed voter who will be able to make a decision to either support or oppose, and obviously we hope support, uh, the Thank proposed you. referendum package. Dr. Robson and Mrs. Uh, Kaufman are handing out some handouts to you right now. And here's Dr. Robson. Thank you so much for your time this evening. We're happy to answer questions if you have them. I know you have a long agenda, so we do appreciate any time we can get with you now and in the future. And just a bit of a commercial, um, when we first met with Council President Bohm uh, back in, oh, it's been a month ago, I guess, uh, we were talking about the fact that we're starting a community conversation. And um, I don't know if you recall that, the first one is on April 23rd. And we're actually going to host that one at the high school. And we'd love uh, to, to have one in this space in the future. Uh, that is going to be a series that's ongoing. You, you recall, I suspect, from uh, popular media that there was the, the situation with a photograph with the Nazi salute. And, uh, you know, we, we really want to deal with the, the issues and concerns of community members and, and treat that in a healing way. And so our first installment on April 23rd is uh, going to have a rabbi to come speak about that issue, um, a lady from the Christian Theological Seminary, and the Zionsville Ministerial Association uh, started that, and we're kind of just the host, and we're going to move that all around the community. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. thank you. Questions, comments? Council, um, with three kids within the school system, I should say one that has graduated out already, uh, they do an excellent job. I know there were a couple of uh, other council members at one of your presentations along with me. Uh, one thing I can talk about, you, you mentioned the high school in the east-west corridor. Every year they let the parents walk their children's schedule. I can tell you the exercise you get going from one end to that other and trying to get around everybody. It's unbelievable and I, I can't imagine the children going from, and, or, or young adults at that point, the young adults going from one end of that building to another. I know my own son had, and son, there's another one in high school now, have classes at one end of that building and then immediately at the other end of that building. And the exercise they get, it keeps them young, but um, keeps, keeps them in shape. But definitely you need additional space on that. On uh, schools, 
the schools have been excellent all the way through. My children have attended from kindergarten on up, and you guys have done an excellent job, and I think that you've done an excellent job in the fiscal stewardship as well. I, for one, am in full support of both referendums. I don't know what the rest of the council thinks on that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, I do, my son's at Z West and my daughter's at Boone Meadow, and, you know, schools are one of the primary reasons uh, residents are choosing Whitestown along with the value and the great amenities our town has. Um, they're very important to everybody. Um, the, I want to, I, I would urge everybody to support it. I'm personally going to support them, um, and that's because um, I want to help ensure that the schools continue to have the necessary funding as we grow. So um, I'd appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Further questions from the council? Mr. Baum, uh, Baum like things Mr. explodes. Baum, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Mr. President, may I make one other comment? Go right ahead. I, just, I, I call. Uh, I'm the guy who calls when, uh, you know, I, I'm the guy who makes the call, and at least in this town, and I work with Bob Taylor and the other folks in the county um, when we have bad weather. And I have on occasion called your folks to say, Wow, Whitestown, great job. Things are going so well with, with uh, you know, things like the clearing and the timing of it, and we certainly appreciate that because it helps keep the whole community moving. And finally, when we've had the occasion to have Whitestown Fire or Whitestown Police roll on things that are just right close here, uh, excellent professionalism and help with what we need, and we really feel safer because of our proximity. So thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good evening. And thank you for all you do for, for the kids here and for coming here, and I look forward to our continued conversations. Thank so. you, sir. Take care. Thank you. All right, before we move on, are there any adjustments that need to be made to the agenda at this time? I would like to pull item F and item G out of the consent agenda. All right, item F and item G out of consent. Okay. There's a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion and second for the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion's adopted. We will list those under new business at the end of the agenda. So after the resolution concerning national foster care. Any other adjustments to the agenda at this time? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to the clerk treasurer report. Any questions on the clerk treasurer report? Seeing none, we'll move on to department reports. Questions on department reports? Seeing none, we'll move on to public requests to speak. Mr. Clerk Treasurer, any requests for non-agenda items? I have none. Any requests for agenda items? None. All right. Thank you, sir. Move on to the approval of the consent agenda as amended. Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as amended, which includes A, approval of meeting minutes from March 13th, 2019, B, claims March 2, 2019 expenses town, March 2019 revenues town, March 2019 utility claims, which includes water operating, wastewater operating, uh, C, consider a free water department training trip for factory training of Mueller fire hydrants and Neptune water meters. D, WF, uh, Whitestown Fire Department declaration of surplus with the vehicle list. E, approve the Whitestown Fire Department list of expenditures exceeding $5,000, which include a training vehicle, computer purchase, MES gear, Aquos board. A, uh, which is now an F, Vectran Encroachment Agreement, Main Street Park. And G, approved the 2019 primary election day as a town closed holiday. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second for the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion is adopted 5 to 0. Next, move on to unfinished business. First item is to consider an ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale of bonds slash bans, ordinance 2019-07. So the, so the public knows what the bonds are for. These are for the fire station, right? Correct. These so. are for the fire station. So ordinance 2019-07, an ordinance of the town of Whitestown, Indiana, authorizing the issuance and sale of bonds 
of the town and, if necessary, bond anticipation notes for the purpose of providing funds to be applied on a portion of the cost of a fire station together with all related improvements, equipment, and incidental expenses in connection therewith and on account of the issuance of bonds therefore. I will offer a motion to approve ordinance number 2019-07. I'll second. Got a motion and a second for the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion's adopted. All right, next item on the agenda is the public hearing considering appropriation ordinance number 2019-08. I will call the public hearing to order at 7.30. Anyone from the public wish to speak on ordinance 2019-08? Mr. President, seeing no one approach to speak, I would make a motion we close the public hearing. Second. Got a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion's adopted. We are closed at 731. Next, on the agenda, oh, next item on the agenda is to consider an uh, appropriation ordinance number 2019-08. Ordinance number 2019-08. Appropriation Ordinance, Town of Whitestown. This will be second read. Mr. President, I make a motion that we adopt Ordinance Number 2019-08. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? Again, this isn't connected for the public. This is in connection to the fire station. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion's adopted. All right. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing. Uh, petition to vacate portions of East County Road 500 South. I will call this public hearing to order at 731. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to come forward to speak on the vacation of East County Road 500 South? Mr. President, seeing no one approach for this hearing, I would recommend we move to close the hearing. Second. Um, motion and second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion's adopted. We are closed at 732. Next item on the agenda is consider an ordinance vacating portions of County Road, East County Road, 500 South. Ordinance 2019-10. Mr. President, I make a motion that we uh, adopt ordinance 2019-10, ordinance of the Town Council of the Town of Whitestown, Indiana, vacating portions of East County Road, 500 South. Second reading. I've got motions there. Second. Second. Motion and second for the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motions adopted. Moving on on the agenda to new business. Item A, public hearing, Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs, ORCA, grant to replace the remaining original water main in Legacy Core of Whitestown. I will call the public hearing to order at 733. Good evening. Yes. I am going to speak on this one. Uh, just Could because you please state your name for the record, sir? Dan Cutshaw with MS Consultants. Thank you. Um, we have a sign-in sheet that uh, we do. We would like to get signed um, for everybody. It's an OCRA requirement. This project, real quick, is uh, about um, replacing a little less than half of the water mains in downtown, the Legacy Core. In 2009, we replaced a little about half of them and we've replaced them kind of as we went on I think Danny can probably attest that uh, there's several locations the rest of them they've had a lot of main breaks uh, and the main breaks always happen in the winter uh, we'd like to get this rolling uh, start of next year the project cost is a million fifty thousand dollars and we're going to go after an ochre grant of 700000 So your match is just over three, about 350000 Now, I want to make sure that I have my understanding correct. We are looking at replacing with these water mains about 5,000 foot of underground infrastructure. Is that an accurate figure? Yes. And this would bring all of our infrastructure up to date to the point where the oldest pieces of infrastructure are about 2007, 2009-ish, somewhere in there? Late 90s. Late 90s? Yeah. Okay. And replace all the infrastructure that was put in the 50s for the water system. Yeah. Right. So this infrastructure is 1950s, maybe even prior, and we would get it replaced, and then our oldest pieces of infrastructure would be late 90s. For the water system, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. And the late 90s water system is, is all plastic pipes. So it's modern construction. Yeah, modern construction. So some of the stuff downtown is still cast iron. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Smaller stuff. smaller mains, smaller. reduce fire flows. So we'll both improve our underground infrastructure and make it not just younger, newer, but also able to hold more capacity. Correct. Great. So this will also help improve fire protection? Yes. I'm Correct. assuming? It should mm -hmm. help the ISO ratings. To clarify on the financing side, if you said that uh, so you're going to seek a $700,000 OCRA grant, and what are the plans if we don't get that grant, one, and two, the remainder, either or, either the 300000 or the million, is that going to be paid for by the town utility or by the town? In other words, will it be a utility bond paid for by the ratepayers of the utility, or will it be a bond that will be paid for by the taxpayers? If we don't receive our grant this year, we will apply again for next year. Um, if we do not get it the next year, we'll have to take a look at and replace a smaller amount. We do have money in our capacity that we're planning to match, so we'll just have to reduce the project and then continue on replacing it as we can. We also have been funding replacements and extensions since we did. I'm sorry, Susan. We have been funding replacements and extensions according to the um, ordinance where we adopted the utility rates. And so we've been finalizing and following the same strategic plan that we adopted in 8 and 9 and again reiterated in, in 12 so that we're, we're actually following the plan we set and working the plan that we all approved. So the funding would be through the utility versus the... Yes, yes. And do you anticipate that having any kind of a, a, a impact on the rates? No. No, no, no impact on the rates whatsoever. We have worked with... Reedy Financial to go over the numbers and to ensure that we can move forward on this project without having any adverse impact to the ratepayers. That is why we set this up so that if we get the grant, we can move forward because we have the match money available. If we don't get the grant, then we wait a year to get the grant so we can uh, set it up that way. This has all been put together and finalized in a way that should we get the grant, we can move forward, no impact. We don't get the grant, then we will reassess so that there is no impact to the ratepayers whatsoever. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. If there are no other questions from the council for those that have come up so far, is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak on this issue? Would you like just, to add to your comments? Just real quick, I'm going to pass the <laughs> sign-up sheet around if everybody can sign up. Please, everyone, sign the sign-up sheet. Start back there. Ah. Okay. Thank you for your work on this. All right. So, Mr. President, I make a motion that we close the public hearing. I've got a motion. Is there a second? Your choice, Matt. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We are closed at 738. And Mr. President, we will be putting a notice out on social media asking all legacy core residents and businesses to please send in a letter of support. To for this, um, you know, we can either do it and get it done quicker with the Ochre Grant, or we can get it done in sections um, by not getting the Ochre Grant. I'm sure everybody would rather have it done quicker mm -hmm. and less disruption. Is, should that only Legacy Corps and businesses could sign that, or is they're that the most impacted? But any council, if council would also uh, be willing to send in a letter as well and we'll send those in to the grant administrator i would also encourage um thank you our town manager to work with our county partners and see if we could get them to support this grant application as well as well as those members of worth township as this significantly impacts their residents and constituents as well mm -hmm. all right Consider it done. thank you sir Moving on to the next item of our new business agenda, consider a resolution approving an amended and an amended a restated economic development agreement, resolution 2019-09. For council's information, what we have done here um, is the petitioner in front of us is taking the place of the Main Street Property Group that had uh, worked with us to create an agreement where we would build the road in between uh, the Hampton and the Baca building to connect back to their parcel by Eagle Church to build uh, their uh, economic development infrastructure. The Main Street Group did not move forward. The current petitioner has agreed to take on the exact same conditions. So this agreement would just restate that and they would then move forward with their project. And I would encourage the petitioner to come forward and talk a little bit about that project. 
Good evening, Mr. President and Council Members. Thank you for your time today. My name is Kyle Russiterra. It's with the law firm of Bingham Greenbaum Dahl. I'm here to represent the petitioner, Eusen Lindsay Health Holdings. Brian Lindsay, one of the uh, two partners in Eusen Lindsay Health Holdings, is also here. We'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Uh, just as a quick o overview of the project, but I want to be sensitive to your time. Uh, Eusen Lindsay Health Holdings uh, plans to construct a uh, skilled uh, nursing facility on the property that's currently owned by, by Main Street would be stepping into their shoes by way of this amended and restated economic development agreement. As a part of that agreement, there is also an assignment and assumption of that former agreement and release of MS Whitestown. The uh, expenditures that the town has already made to build what has now been dedicated as uh, Baca Road uh, would be uh, are contemplated within this agreement and kind of the repayment of those uh, of those funds already expended. Uh, this we are, are promising for a, a minimum uh, $10,500,000 million investment in the skilled nursing facility. There's a great need for this project, uh, both for, for the community and its uh, residents to offer this uh, skilled nursing facility, as well as to bring in uh, 72 uh, jobs into the community, many of which are uh, skilled labor um, and the, uh, the main uh, nursing aides there that would be uh, Offering the nursing and the skilled nursing at the facility would be uh, earning wages that are uh, several dollars over the average in the state of Indiana, and we'd be, uh, be bringing a lot of those skilled nursing jobs from Marion County or other counties in the greater Indianapolis area to uh, Boone County. So I think that that's a, a nice little feather in the cap of this project as well as the community. Um, just open it up to any questions you may have. Any questions from the council for the petitioner? I'm just glad to see the project coming back to life. I think that's one of the, the best points here is that the whole purpose of the agreement in the first place and now restating it here is to get a building out of the ground, you know, get mm -hmm. AV up in the air and to get this facility moving forward. So I want to thank you for taking on this project and moving it forward, and I look forward uh, to its opening. Absolutely. We're very excited. We appreciate your support. And uh, we have development plan approval as well as RDC. And so this is kind of our last step on the governmental approval side. And then we look forward to uh, moving some dirt. There we go. Mr. President, I make a motion that we adopt resolution number 2019-09, resolution of the town council of the town of Whitestown, Indiana, approving an amended and restated economic development agreement. Second. Motion and second for the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion's adopted. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Next item on our agenda is to consider a resolution establishing the Community Service Award. And this is uh, resolution number 2019-11. Town of Whitestown, Indiana, resolution number 2019-11, a resolution concerning establishment of the Senator Albert S. White Community Service Award. Whereas the Town Council of the Town of Whitestown, Indiana, seeks to promote civic engagement and community service, and whereas the Town of Whitestown is growing and vibrant community that benefits exponentially from citizens that give their time and talents to the betterment of others and the Whitestown community, and whereas, in addition to fostering the well-being of the community, studies have shown that volunteering helps improve mental and physical health, and whereas Albert S. White, 1803 to 1864, for whom the town of Whitestown is named, served the state of Indiana as a federal judge, U.S. Senator and Representative, where he was a member of the Select Committee on Emancipation and was a leader in the movement to abolish slavery in the United States. And whereas the Council desires to encourage citizens to impact their community and publicly engage in community service and leadership in the spirit of Albert S. White's public service, and whereas, as an act of recognition of all volunteerism and its positive impact on the community, the Council desires to establish an administrative committee for identifying and recognizing individuals for community service that make a significant contribution to the Whitestown community through their time, actions, talents, and dedication. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Town Council of the Town of Whitestown, Indiana, as follows. Section 1. There is hereby established the Senator Albert S. White Community Service Award. The Albert S. White Award is established to recognize individuals who demonstrate a commitment to the betterment of Whitestown community through exemplary acts of public service and volunteerism. Section 2. There is hereby established a Community Service Recognition Committee for the Town of Whitestown. 
The committee shall be comprised of A, the town council president, B, the town manager, and C, one additional member appointed by and serving at the pleasure of the town council president. Section 3, the committee, as an administrative function, is tasked with reviewing potential candidates for receipt of the Albert S. White Award and, where appropriate, formally recognizing on behalf of the town up to one individual per month as a recipient of the Albert S. White Award. The committee or designee of the committee shall report any recipient of the Albert S. White Award to the town council during a public meeting. Mr. President. I would make a motion we adopt resolution number 2019-11. All right. I've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. I've got a motion and a second. I just want to uh, thank uh, everyone for their support of this resolution. Um, as we have seen over the past couple of years, uh, there are a lot of great things coming out of our community, a lot of people who are doing very good work in both their regular jobs, in their part-time. We have... Uh, those folks that are no longer in the workforce. We have those folks that are uh, as young as single digit ages that are doing great things for our town. And we felt that it was best served for us to give them this type of recognition. I've been working with uh, Jason and with Tanya and the PR department to put together what that means, what that looks like. And I look forward to, uh, should this pass tonight, uh, our next meeting where we will be able to announce our first recipient and uh, give you a preview of some of the things that we have done for them and start to roll this out so we can recognize those individuals that are helping make our community a great place uh, to live in. I, I think this is a great resolution. I just wanted to say thank you for getting this in front of us because, I mean, we, just, we have amazing people in this town and they deserve to be recognized. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion is adopted. Thank you, everyone. Next item on our agenda is to consider a resolution concerning Nar National Foster Care Month, resolution number 2018-12. Resolution 2019-12, a resolution declaring May Foster Care Month in the town of Whitestown, Indiana. Whereas strengthening families and focusing on their well-being is a key to building strong communities. And whereas all children have a right to thrive, learn, and grow. And whereas the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services estimates that more than 440,000 children and youth are in foster care and whereas foster parents provide for care, safety, and stability for children and teens in their care whose parents need time to develop skills to become the parents their children need, and whereas keeping families together is the primary goal in a successful child welfare system, and whereas families involved in the child welfare system experience a wide array of needs that can challenge the ability to provide for children's well-being, and whereas National Foster Care Month was established to help identify ways to strengthen families and community-based support systems and partnerships. And whereas the Town Council desires to bring attention to the important role that foster care plays in the well-being of children and our community. And whereas members of the Whitestown community are encouraged to learn more about the ways they can help enhance the lives of children and youth in foster care by visiting the National Foster Care Month website developed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And whereas the Whitestown Town Council respectfully requests that the town through the town manager and all its departments actively promote Foster Care Month in Whitestown. Now therefore be it resolved by the Town Council of the Town of Whitestown, Indiana as follows. The Town Council does hereby declare and proclaim May 2019 as Foster Care Month in Whitestown, Indiana. The town, through the town manager and all its departments, is hereby charged with the responsibility of actively promoting Foster Care Month in the town in order to better educate the public about foster care and to create a better community for children and families in the foster care system. The town council <laughs> encourages citizens to learn more about foster care and what they can do to support families in the foster care system. This resolution is very important, and uh, the foster care system just provides uh, so much support for our most vulnerable Hoosiers. So I just want people to realize that there are small ways that everyone can help. And even if it's just providing clothes for a child that's in foster care, that little bit can make a big difference. So 
please, please try to help in any way that you can. I would move that we adopt resolution number 2019-12. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Um, I just want to thank Councilman Miller uh, for bringing this to our attention so that we could get this uh, resolution in front of us and so we can continue the work that we've started in this month and move it into next month. Uh, as you may recall, recently we changed our policy for parental time off and we included foster parenting in that policy. Uh, we, we here in White Sound, we understand and we know the importance that foster parents play in a child's life. The children getting placed in foster care are going through very difficult times and they need all the support that we can give them and to do that best it comes from the foster parents so we need to support the foster parents so they can focus on the kids and establishing that relationship that is key to the success of that child's future and that's where their focus should be so we need to help take their stress away on some of these other things. So I just want to thank you again for bringing that forward. I've got a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion's adopted. All right, we've now reached the end of our original agenda, and we have uh, re-identified uh, two items at the bottom of our new business agenda. We're going to go to item what is now E under new business, consider a reimbursement resolution for sewage works project financing, resolution 2019-10. Reimbursement resolution number 2018-10, a reimbursement resolution of the town of White Sun, Indiana, declaring its official intent to reimburse expenses for costs related to the construction of additional of additions and improvements to the sewage works of the town. I would move we adopt resolution number 2019-10. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Yes, there is. Go right ahead. Question right away to start with. This is $5.2 million. This is not a small amount. So to start with, I think we should have had a little bit more discussion about this. Second, yes, I did have a, a small discussion with the town manager, and it is being covered by the ratepayers. And uh, with luck, it will not have, I shouldn't say with luck, according to him, it will not have any effect on, on, on the utility rates. But it is being covered by the utility, not by town, which is my first question. Just Kevin, like please speak one. into the microphone. I can't hear you. I was saying that, and I apologize, I'm the one that's usually asking others on that. Um, what I said is my questions with the town manager what had to do with who was paying for it that's being paid for by the utility and by the ratepayers uh, that it will probably be reimbursed by others so it won't have any effect on the rates and that was a major concern like I said it's a 5.2 million dollar project and I would have liked to maybe have let the public know a little bit more rather than put it in the consent agenda that's why I asked for it to be pulled out Let comments? the public know what we're spending. When we're spending $5.2 million, it shouldn't be in a consent agenda. Sure, we'll let them know. Um, we are taking, we are saying that in the future we're going to take on this debt so that we can pay off a ban that is currently in the sewage works from prior years, and that ban is at a higher interest rate than what this bond would get. So we will save the utility money by reducing the interest payments we're going to make. Secondly, this money would go towards building a lift station for those areas in the Legacy Core and Worth Township that currently don't have the proper service necessary for that land to be developed. This allows us to build a station that is not something that will only serve one community. It will allow us to build a station that will serve all of the areas in Worth Township. We will have control over the project and we will get reimbursement as those community come forward. First of all being Westport Homes. During the discussions with Westport Homes, if they would have tried to put a lift station into their community, it would have been a smaller project. It would increase the cost of their project for people to buy those homes, and then we would have had to put lift stations into any development that came forward. By taking this approach, we are adhering to the master plan and the development plans that Susan referenced earlier when talking about some of the other works with the ORCA grant, and it allows us to take advantage of our AA credit rating that gives us the low interest rate to put us in a solid financial position. So that is what is the basis of this particular item. I agree, and I agree that, 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 that I don't dispute that, but I'm saying that it should have been discussed publicly versus just shoving it in the consent agenda. This wasn't Let the public know what's going on when we're spending $5.2 million. Further discussion? All those in favor of Resolution 2019-10, please say aye. 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 Opposed nay? No. 
Motions adopted four to one. Next item on our agenda is item F under new business. Consider an engineering contract with MS Consultants. My question with that is, had this been, has this been bid out? Are we bidding out our professional services contract or just being awarded? This was an awarding of the contract uh, to MS There's Consultants. No bid. This was an was awarding no of the contract to MS Consultants. You, you spoke so we're putting out contracts without asking for a request for proposals. That's my question. Yes or no? We are awarding this contract. Without a request for proposals. No, we, Kevin, we have previously... Um, How much is the contract? Hang on. Can I finish, please, sir? I have the floor. We have previously said that our engineering consultant for these purposes was MS Consultants. As each comes up, we have an additional contract that stipulates and clarifies exactly the scope of each individual project. We have the exact costs that have been detailed and lined out and have been approved by this council in a previous meeting. So this is to taking that second step that says in regards to the existing statement that says how much we're going to pay, this is this scope, this is this project, and this is what this cost is going to be. Because we chose them early on after going through an RFP and an RFQ process that they would indeed be our professional of scope for for water, for sewer, and for waste for wastewater and stormwater. Further discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. I'm gonna abstain from this. Four to zero with one abstention. All right. Next item on agenda is other business. I have nothing on that item. Is there anything for the good of the council that needs to be added to the agenda at this time? Parting comments? Um, before we ad uh, adjourn, Nathan, what events do we have coming up this week or, or this month with the, before the next council meeting? Well, I believe we have a couple of major events. Yes, uh, most of our staff, field staff and definitely all park staff have been busy. Viking Fest is this weekend. I um, hope to see everybody there. It's a lot of work setting up, and we hope it's a good time. So it's this weekend, and then we'll have another movie night on the first or second Saturday in April, which would be before the next meeting, or May before the next meeting. I'm losing track of time. And we also, uh, our first concert series will start the first Friday in May. will be our first concert series. Easter egg hunt? Uh, oh, yeah, Easter egg hunt. There's a whole list of goodies. If you check our Facebook page, You'll see a lot of them, or the website. Uh, we also have our Easter egg hunt. This year we've partnered with Sunshine Social, and we are adding in a sensitivity aspect where there'll be a live rabbit for the children who are scared by the larger Easter bunny costume. They can come in and pet a live rabbit, and uh, we're setting this room that you're in now up for children with sensitive requirements. So... Thank you for letting the public know. Thank you. And thank Tanya so much for keeping up on our social media and posting what are the upcoming events because I don't think anybody could miss that this weekend is Viking Fest and that Easter egg's coming up and the concert series has been blown out there. So, Tanya, I really appreciate all that. Further comments from the council? Do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motions adopted. We are adjourned. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight.